So basically, there are two main different types of hydrolysate. One is called extensively and the other one partially uh, hydrolysate. And that's really a matter of how far you go with hydrolyzation, meaning how far you cut basically the proteins, the intact protein, into uh, smaller peptides. So in extensively hydrolyzed, you really cut it down very small. Basically, you still end up with amino acids or D or 3 peptides, meaning that they are um, very highly low allergenic because the peptides are too small to be uh, able to be uh, cross-linking the antibodies that are leading to uh, allergic symptoms. So that's why the infant formula are really suitable for infants who already have allergies. On the other side, you have the partially hydrolyzed uh, infant formula, where the hydrolyzation is, is different, so different enzymes, leading to a different size of protein and sequence for sure of proteins. Meaning that there are still quite large peptides being able to induce some symptoms in some infants, so that's why they are not suitable for uh, infants who are already allergic. But on the contrary, they are still large enough and for sure, depending on the sequence as well, so the size and the sequence will determine if they are, can be tolerogenic, basically, so can educate the immune system to better tolerate cosmic protein. And that's why they are called like tolerogenic uh, infant formula that could lead to prevention of uh, some allergic disease. So that's what the kind of simple view that we had at the beginning, thinking that only the size is determining if it's only low allergenic or low allergenic plus tolerogenic. However, we made a few studies, basically in vitro and in vivo studies, which really show that it's not only the size that is important. So size is necessary because you need to have enough uh, peptides that are large enough to be able to, to educate and to um, educate the immune system, but it's not enough because we have tested different with the same size but different sequence of amino acids and we can show uh, clearly that they are not doing the same effect basically on, uh, on the immune system. So basically it's both size and uh, sequence of the peptide that are uh, important and probably, and that we don't know yet, something other in the, in, in the infant formula can be lipids can be um, carb yeah, carbohydrates or whatever that can, or probiotics as well, that can also add on the top of the peptide some uh, beneficial effect in the immune response. So that's um, kind of a complex, actually, uh, concept, but uh, that's why it's very important that it's, it's uh, verified afterwards in humans, the beneficial effect that is really showed in humans as well. that this infant formula and their beneficial effect has really to be clinically proven before uh, being recommended for, for use, that's for sure, because they are all different. Basically, it's not that easy, it's not just cutting protein into pieces, you have to have the right uh, pieces at the end to, to have the beneficial effect, and that's the only way to show it really, is to do clinical trials, prevention clinical trials. <music>